So by now you'll have noticed that Instagram has changed their grid. We are now working with a rectangular feed rather than a square feed. And one of the biggest complaints I've had people share with me is that they're frustrated that their pinned post is no longer looking good. And so if you don't know what a pinned post is, a pinned post is Instagram is allowing us to pin up to three posts at the top of our grid. So the top three images that show up on our grid will, can always be the same post. This is really great to share a particular product or offering, introduce yourself, share a freebie, whatever you're doing. It's kind of great to always have that there. So when someone first comes to your feed, they get a really great idea of what's there. But what happens with this new Instagram grid update is not only are the posts rectangle, they also trim a little bit of the edges. And it means that if you even already had rectangular posts in your grid, that they're actually going to get trimmed really weirdly on the edges. So they won't even be cohesive anymore because of what a lot of people are doing is they aren't just putting three random posts up pinned at the top. They're actually making these posts what I call cohesive. So they actually flow between the posts. There's pictures that overlap between these different posts. So it looks like one long banner rather than three individual posts. And so in this tutorial, I want to show you the workaround to making sure that your pinned post at the top of your Instagram can look like one cohesive banner rather than three mushed up pieces and pieces where the bits don't actually fit together because of that little crop. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I am a graphic designer who is obsessed with helping you to utilize Canva design branding to make sure that you are making money in your business and you're saving yourself time and you're not getting overwhelmed. And so excited to dive in. So this is what we're going to create today. This is three separate posts that when they're posted together, they come together seamlessly. And so I'm going to share my screen with you now and you can see, so I've got three designs here. We've got what I like to have. It's this is a bit of an introduction. So about me in this post, I might share a bit of my story and help people get to know who I am, why they might want to work with me. In this post, I want to, I might, you might share something like testimonials. So I've got some screenshots of past clients and what they've done when they've worked with me. And then I've also got a freebie over here on the left. So when they're all pinned together, it gives a really great overview of who I am, why you can trust me and how you can work with me. And you'll see here that there is some overlap between these slides. You can see myself here. I actually flow over into this slide here. And this little blob over here flows into this next slide here. Now you could choose to have a lot more overlap than what I've done here. Personally, I like to keep these posts feeling like they're separate so people can see that they actually have a reason to click on each post and read and digest what's on each post. But if you even wanted to have one photo that was split along three pictures, three slides, this tutorial and this hack will still work for you. So the first and most important thing that I want you to do is go to your file up here and press settings and select to show rulers and guides, or you can press shift R on your keyboard. Now these clicking this is going to reveal this little ruler up the top and this ruler down the side. This is what's going to help us to create what's called guides. And these guides are going to be our guide for where our Instagram grid is going to crop our little rectangular bits. So if I hover my mouse over this ruler over here and I click and drag, it's going to bring out a little line. This line won't be visible on my, on, my, on my final design, but it will be visible for me to work with. And so what I can do is actually bring this ruler across to where Instagram is going to crop my grid. Now it's actually, I think, 32.5 pixels in from the edge is where it's going to crop. Canva can't do exact like 0.5 decimals of a pixel. So it's just going to do, I'm just going to round up to 33. No one's going to notice this 0.5 of a pixel difference. Trust me. So you can see at the top here, it's showing what the numbers are. If you can't get exactly 33 pixels here, what I recommend doing is zooming in. So I'm just using my trackpad to zoom in, or you can press um, control or command plus, or you can press the little um, zooming option down the bottom here. So if I just zoom in a little bit, it means I can get a little bit more accurate with my lines. I'm going to click on my line here and drag it around until it says 33. I'm then gonna do the same thing on the other side. Then we need to put that same guide on the opposite side, 33 pixels in from the edge. And so that measurement will be 1047. So if I just scroll this across, you'll wait for seeing 1047. All right, so that's the main part done. Next, I want you to design your post. For me, I've already designed my post. I'm making sure that my text is nice and clear. I'm making sure that it's fully branded all the things that I teach you in every other tutorial that you watch of mine. And when I'm ready to create the cohesiveness between my designs, this is how you do it. This hack feels complicated, but I promise you that it's not. First, I want you to press R on your keyboard. When you do that, a rectangle is gonna pop up on your design. If you don't wanna press R on your keyboard, you can go just to elements and just pop in this rectangle. It doesn't really matter what you do, but popping, pressing R is the easiest way to get that. Now I wanna bring this rectangle right over to the edge of my design. I'm gonna use these little handles here to make my rectangle the same thickness as that 33 pixels. I'm making it the thickness that my design is, away, that my ruler is away from the edge. Or in other words, what the grid is going to crop your design to. So once I've got that little uh, rectangle there, I'm gonna grab that rectangle and I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna select the picture that I want to go across to the next slide. So for me, I'm gonna select the picture of me. I'm gonna press shift and click. 
And now you'll see that I've got both that rectangle and the picture of me selected. Once you've done that, I want you to press copy. You can press control C or command C or right click and press copy and then go to that next slide. So for me right now, I'm, you can see I've got my thumbnails viewed. Um, if you can, you're probably as a default on what's called scroll view in Canva. This will work just as fine as well. I personally prefer toggling to the thumbnail view. And then if I press paste on my keyboard, if I click on my design and right click and press paste or control V, it's gonna paste in that picture of me and that little rectangle will be copied. Now what I wanna do is bring that design all the way across to the edge. But instead of going all the way to the edge where I'm just revealing the part of me that would be chopped off on this, this side, I'm actually going to stop bringing myself across once my little rectangle here reaches my ruler. So you can see here, it's gonna clip in a second, that this ruler here and this rectangle that I've, that I've just added to my design is now lining up. This now means that this version of me and this version of me will align perfectly when you've got your pinned posts on your Instagram grid because this is allowing for that gap, that, that section where Instagram's gonna crop my design off. So making sure that you've got this sitting over to this edge here. Now, something that I did not tell you that I need to make sure you also do, because I wanted to show you just one step at a time, I'm just gonna undo this and bring myself back over here. When you're bringing this across, make sure you don't go up or down, otherwise it won't line up properly vertically. And so to make that happen, it's very, very easy. All you need to do is click and drag, but then while you're dragging, also hold down shift on your keyboard. Holding down shift will make sure that this stays vertically the same as when you picked it up. So if you can see I'm moving my mouse up and down here, but it's, my, my picture isn't actually moving up and down. Whereas if I let go of shift, I'm now moving up and down a lot. So I'm gonna hold down shift and it will stay the same height as when I pasted it in, which it, when, it, when, it, when it pastes it in, it stays at that same height as what I copied it from. If it all sounds so confusing, just trust me, grab this, hold down shift and drag it across to that side and make sure that, that rectangle lines up with that ruler that you put in. Now all you have to do is delete it. Not delete your picture, delete that box because we don't want that to accidentally show on our design. When I was testing this, I accidentally left this box here a thousand times. Make sure you go back to this original page, delete it and make sure you delete it from that page over here. And so I'm just gonna do this again briefly for you so you can see it in action. So I, I want this little um, swoosh here to then come across into my next post. So again, I'm gonna press R on my keyboard, insert that rectangle, doesn't matter what color it is, make this the same width as my ruler, hold down shift and select the ruler and my swoosh, press copy, right click and press copy, then go to my next slide, press paste, hold down shift and drag this across until that is touching perfectly on the edge of this ruler here, holding down shift again, really just make sure you're holding down shift there. And then I'm gonna go back and delete this box, then delete this box, now these designs will all be perfectly cohesive. So let's work out how to save these and post them to Instagram. So I'm gonna press the share button at the top right hand corner, hit download, and then I'm gonna change this off MP4. I don't know why it's chosen MP4 today and select this to be a PNG. You can do MP4 if you've got animated objects and you want this to be a moving image, which I have actually done a tutorial on last week. I'll link that right here for you. And I have also done another tutorial on this whole Instagram grid update so you can fully understand what's happening there. And I'll link this here as well. All right, so I'm now gonna to choose to have these as PNG. PNG is a really great static image file. It's nice, high quality. And I wanna make sure all of my three pages are selected. Press done and press download. So once these are downloaded, I'm gonna send them to my phone because I've got a Mac and a, an iPhone. But if you can email them to yourself, you can, um, you can post them straight from your computer. However you get your images from Canva, or you can even go to the Canva app and download them. However you do it, get those images to wherever you're posting to Canva from. So once you're on your phone, what I want you to do is go to the little plus button down the bottom to post a picture. Make sure you're on post rather than story. And then you wanna select your post, one of your three posts. There's two things to note here about the order that you post these in. What you wanna do is post in reverse order. So post the image that's going to be on the right hand side first, then the middle post second, and the post that's on the left hand side last. You can pin your posts in any order that you want to so that you can actually fix this up if you did this wrong. But what, why I like to post it in the correct order the first time is that when you finally, when you eventually unpin these posts, like you're not gonna have these posts pinned for the rest of your Instagram life. When you eventually unpin these posts, it means that they're still gonna look really great in your grid, even though they're not actually pinned anymore. So you're gonna wanna select your last post. So for me, that is this one here. I'm gonna make sure this is a post. I'll press next, next and then share that post. I'm then going to do the same thing, but with my middle post. And finally, I'm gonna do the post that's on the left-hand side. Now, obviously you'd be adding in captions to these. You can even do carousels under these if you want to, but I'm just keeping it simple today.
Now, you'll see here when I go to my grid, firstly, I've been testing this all day with this with this account, so that's why there's so many versions of this. But you'll see that those top three posts, that's what I just shared right now. This one here, and this one here, and this one here. And you'll see when you actually look at this grid, they're perfectly aligned. When you look at my hand, you look at my shoulder, everything is perfect here. So that is how you do it. And if you want to pin these posts, all you need to do is click on that post, click the three dots, and press pin to your profile. And you might do that three times. You'll see when you first pin it, it's actually gonna bring that post over to the left-hand side. So I need to make sure I then pin in, in that same order. So pin the right and then the middle and then the left-hand one. And that way it will appear perfectly in your design. Now, I wanna share a few design things to remember while you're doing this process. Firstly is don't put anything really important up the top right-hand corner of your post. You'll see when you look at my grid here that in the top right-hand corner, it's now got that little pin option, that little pin icon. If this was a carousel, it'd have the little carousel icon if it wasn't yet pinned. And so don't put anything really important in that section because it will get covered up by that little pin icon. Another thing to note is when you're putting pictures across multiple pages, I try not to split someone's head down the middle of two different posts because it just looks weird on one of the posts. Like you saw in my example, I try to put most of someone on one slide and then a, like a reference of someone on the other side. Just to make sure that when people are actually viewing that post as a single post, it still works because that should still be our priority is when people are viewing that as a single post, it still works. And so I hope you found that helpful. If you do this and you want to, and if you do this, feel free to tag me one of your pin posts so I can come to your profile and have a look. I would love to share what you're doing with the world. So thank you for joining me today. And if you want more design hacks and Canva tips to make your business grow, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notifications button, because there is a lot of great content coming out every single week that I would love to share with you. And until next time, see you later.